Hello everyone, hope you all are doing well. This is the third and the last episode of our project where we are adding the Gradio based UI on top of OpenAI Whisper automated speech recognition model. In this episode, we are going to perform two things. First, we are going to build the UI on top of the application which we have created in the previous video. And I will be giving you a full code walkthrough about how the UI is implemented and the actual and the and all the actions associated with the UI. The same code base has also been deployed at Hugging Face Spaces. So there is another walkthrough which I will be giving you by live example showing you how the code works at the Hugging Face Space. And finally, you can also get this whole code from our GitHub repo. It means by completing this project, you are going to learn how to build the UI for your Whisper AI model, local file system or the Hugging Face repo. And you can extend it depending on your need. So there is a lot to learn. So let's get ourselves started. So we are going to start where we left off in the previous video. And very first step, what I will do is that I will be taking all these functions and moving into a utils file. Next, let's remove this. We do not need. Now we need to create the entry point for our gradient. So here will be gr dot blocks. So this is our entry point and that will be our application. So we can we can call it my app is equal to gradio dot block. And then this app will be used to build the whole Gradio UI. So we are going to create a new class for that. Whisper UI, Whisper UI.py, that is our class. Here we are going to create a class. So that's our initializer, which I have already set it up. Let's import the Gradio first here. And here is the Whisper UI method. It creates the tab, row and column, and finally print the label. And then finally, and here is the launcher. So these three methods are very important in order to get started with the Gradio UI. Now we need to take this class and import here. So we could say from Whisper UI import create the UI object. So you can call it UI object equals to Whisper model UI. And here, as you see that there is a warning because it's expecting an object. So that will be our object to be passed. Then this object is going to be the create whisper UI. And finally, when UI is ready, then you're going to be using the launcher. So that's all you really needed to get the entry point and all the code related with the managing the UI and handling the whisper model and processing it is all going to be implemented here. Let's run this code once to make sure everything is ready for us. Code is running 7860 port. And here we are opening and that's the starter UI for us. Now I have already implemented this full code and I will give you a very quick walkthrough. So I have already implemented the full working code in this whisperui.py. Let me run the code and I will walk you through step by step. We are starting the application. Application is up and running. So first we have an option to choose your model type and by clicking this load whisper model, your models are loaded. So we have selected the base model and base model is loaded and the debug information related with the base model is all listed here. So let's take a look how this code is implemented. So here is the list of model types and here is the model status label and this is the button which launches the load model. Implementation is here where we select the input type and output comes as a model status as well as the debug test. The method is implemented in this load whisper model. Here we use the whisper.load model by passing the model type and the model loads up and the debug information about the model is being sent to the output as well as the model status. And then the loaded model is being set as a class parameter. That's all this code is in order to load the model. Next step, we have ability to load the content directly from YouTube URL. So you can provide a particular YouTube URL and that URL will be downloaded locally and that file will be available in this list. So this URL is already preset. So let me click here. This is the URL. Let's play the content. Thank you very much. 
I will stop it here. Let's go back and see how this code is implemented. Here is the YouTube URL, which is a text box. And here is the video which play after the video is downloaded. And this is the button which loads up the YouTube content. When this video is being clicked, this is the method which download the video, takes the YouTube URL as an input and YouTube video content as an output. Let's look into the method implementation. Here we are using a library called PyTube. Here we are taking the path and there is a data files folder where all the content is being downloaded and used as a source to load the content. This is the method which use the URL and then yt.streams.filter downloads the file in this data files folder and then the path is being sent to the UI. That's how you could see the video is downloaded and the played in the Gradio UI. In the next step, we load up the content from the data files folder. So when you click this button, this actually loads up all the files which has been already placed into the data files folder. So if you put a new YouTube URL, you load here and then you reload this button that's going to load your content. So let's take a look how this event is implemented in this load all videos button. This is the right side. So this is the video list drop down, which is a uh, files being available in this data files folder. And this is the button which actually loads up the content. So remember the audio files list is a parameter of the class which has the list of all the files. Let's come in into the implementation. This button has the video list drop down as an input and output. And let's look into the load content method. Here you could see that we are creating a path which really loads up the current working folder plus data files. And then we just use this single line code which actually iterate all the files available in this folder and then filter all the MP4 and MP3 and make sure that they are part of audio files list parameter. And then we use the dropdown.update method to pass an updated list of files as a choice parameter. And that's how the list of files available in this folder are available to the Gradio UI. In this next step, we select the choice. Either we want to perform the transcribe or the decode. Then we select whether we want system to detect the input language or we can provide the English, Hindi and Japanese or you can add more in this list. And finally, we choose that whether we want the transcribe or translate when we are using either transcribe or decode function. And then depending on that, we click this button and that's where the results are being loaded. And the debug information related to our output is also added here. So let's take a look how this whole code is implemented. The first, we detect the transcribe or decode, which is a radio button. So Then we select language detect from a dropdown and we select the translate or transcribe from the dropdown. You can actually change to radio as well. And now when this button is being clicked, that event happened and the output of our model result is being rendered into this video text. So let's take the implementation of this button click event that happens here. Code implemented in this get video to text method. The inputs are these four parameter and the output is the video text, it means output text, and then the debug text. Let's look into the implementation. These four parameters are being passed. At first, we check if the input file exists. If input file does not exist, we return the error. If the input file exists, then we go look into whether it's transcribe or decode. And then for transcribe, there is a method available, and for decode, there is a method available. So let's look into the transcribe first. So I will run their selection and then I will explain the method. So let's look into the transcribe. Let me put a breakpoint here. And at this point, we will select a transcribe method. We can use this best two minutes motivation speech, which we have just downloaded. We will select a transcribe. We will use a detect method, means detect the language. And our method is transcribe also. So trans install English to English. Click here. As you could see, we hit our breakpoint here, we go inside. In this method, we are first checking if our whisper model is loaded or not. Then we look into transcribe or translate. We select this and then finally we set the transcribe option based on our choice and our task is transcribe. 
And at this time, if the language detect is not detect, then we add the language option. And finally, the method transcribe is used along with transcribe option to perform the transcription. Let's run it. Now at this point, the model will take some time to complete the processing. We can look into the UI. Here you could see that UI is in action. And after some time, we will hit this next step. We have hit our translation and here is the result. And we are collecting the debug information. Here you could see that two minute speech is here and the debug information which just really gives the more detail about the object where you could get the timestamp, segment, everything else. So that's what you have seen, the result coming out from the transcribe. Now I will select a different file in Hindi. So this is the Bharat, which input is Hindi. So we are going to decode it. Here I will select the Hindi as an input language and we will translate it. So the result should be translated from Hindi to English and the result should be written in English here. Let's try it. And this time the breakpoint should, should hit into the decode option. Let's come back. The decode should be this option. Here is the decode. And depending on whether you are doing the transcribe or you are doing the decode, you have to pass either the video full path or the audio loaded already by the whisper library. So here we are loading the lab audio first from the input file and then passing the audio to the decode method. Audio is loaded. Now we are coming inside. First, we are again checking whether the model is loaded completely. Then we are adding the padding for our input audio file because the language detect has already been added here. So we're going to be adding the detect option here. The language decoding option already has the language and our task type is the translate. At this point, the decode option is going to start. And this error is benign actually because the whisper model has already been validated here earlier. So we know that whisper model is right. And our input is in Hindi language. So our translation should be in English. The translation has been completed, result text and the full debug information. So let's check the output. Here you could see that this is the translation for a 30 second Bharat.mp3 which is in Hindi and translation has been completed. Here is the debug information where you could get the different tokens, output, etc related to our input text. The code which we have just walked through has also been deployed at the hugging face space also. Here in this hugging face whisper UI is a public space and full code has been pushed into there. Here is your app.py. Here is the whisper UI.py and all the data files are being pushed into here. And the application looks exactly the way which we have just completed in the local version of Python runtime. Loading the files. Here you could see all these files are loaded. Loading the model. Base model is loaded. And here we can actually select a particular file very quickly. This is a Japanese input. Let's transcribe it. Use the input as a Japanese. We just want to, we just want to translate it Japanese to English and use the transcription and click here. And as you could see that the Japanese language content has been translated into the English. And here is the debug information. Test the YouTube download. I can just give you a new URL. We can click here. And that's going to download the YouTube URL and you could actually play here. Will you play? No. The files related to this project are all available for you to try. The code which we have completed in this project is also being pushed into the GitHub repo. You can find this whole code available in this DeepWorks GitHub repo at this open AI whisper folder and looking into this open AI whisper UI and full code you are going to get along with the requirements.txt these two libraries which you need to install in order to make this application work. So that's where we are going to complete this video series. I hope you have learned a lot. I do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for your patronage and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Until then, thank you so much.